This is question nine, and it reads as follows. It says a closed rectangular box has to be constructed as follows. The dimensions, the length is L, the width is W, and the height is H. The length L of the base has to be three times its width. The volume has to be five cubic meters. The material for the top and the bottom parts costs 15 rands per square meter, and the material for the sides costs six rands per square meter. To weight problems, we all have problems when it comes to dealing with weight problems. So my advice to you is, if you've got a situation like this, try to take the love letter that the examiner wrote uh, to you, and then convert that into a picture. Our brains understand pictures better than words. So it's a lot of words that can confuse you. If you want to simplify the question, just draw a terrible picture would, would do. As long as you can see what is going on, it then becomes easier for you to analyze uh, this particular problem. So we're told that this is a rectangular box. This is my impression of what the rectangular box could look like, right? And then it's actually a rectangular box. It's a box, so it's three-dimensional. So I'm going to construct this. And in this case, I think they said it's closed everywhere. Okay, cool. The dimensions are the length. Okay, so we've got the length this side at the bottom. Okay, let me just remove this. I'm going to represent that in terms of W because I heard somewhere they're telling us that the length is three times something. Okay, and it's got the width, which is going to be the W, and then it's got a height of H. So our height is also going to be appearing there as H. Okay, uh, and then we're told that the length is three times its width. So that means our L can be changed and expressed as three times W. Very important. Okay. Now, the extra information that we told is that the volume of this thing is actually five cubic meters. So five cubic meters is the volume. Keep that in mind. Okay, cool. The material for the top and the bottom parts. Okay. Now, always remember the following. If you're dealing with a rectangular prism, the top area is exactly identical to the bottom area. So if the price of the top and the bottom parts is the same, it means two times one area will be actually the price for both the top and the bottom part. Just remember the area of the top part of the box is the same as the area of the bottom part. The left part is the same as the right part, okay? And the other faces are also equal to each other. So the rectangular prism has got six sides, two that are equal, two that are equal, and the two that are also equal. So keep that in mind as you're working through this question. Very important. Okay, cool. So we are told here that the material for the top and the bottom part is 15 rands per square meter. So that means the cost of producing this area, okay, is 6 rands per square meter. It's, only, it's not only at the top, it's top as well as the bottom, okay? Now the sides, tell me about the sides. Then they're saying to us here, and the material for the sides costs 6 rands. Okay, 50 rands on top, yes. 15 rands on top and 6 rands on the side. Let's go back to that. So the top is 15 rands per square meter. And the material for the sides, both the left and the right side, the front and the back side, okay, all of them, they will cost you six rand per square meter. So this is me just taking the words and trying to put them in, in the form of a picture. So that's the area, the total area that you see there. Okay, cool. No challenges here. Okay. So the first question says to us, we need to show that the cost to construct the box can be calculated by cost equals to 90W squared plus 48WH. Okay, there's H and W in that function, so I need to keep them in any formula that I'm writing. So let's talk about it. The total cost of this, the cost of the box, okay, is the cost of the top, okay, plus the cost of the bottom, okay, plus the cost of the sides. Right, there are four sides, the left, the right, the front, and the back side. Okay, cool, very important. Now, the cost of the top, we know that it's going to be six rands. So it's six rands multiplied by the area of the top part. The area of the top part is going to be the length multiplied by the width. It's going to be the length, okay, multiplied by the width. That's the total area of the top part. So it's going to be length times W plus. The cost of the bottom part will be exactly identical because at the bottom, again, it's length, multiplied by the width. That's the area of the bottom. 
Uh, so it's going to be six rands. Again, not six rands, but 15 rands. I don't know why I keep on saying six rands. I guess I like cheap things. Okay, I guess I like cheap things. It's not six, but it's 15 rands. They said it's 15 rands. So again, we're going to have 15 rands again at the bottom. And the area is actually length terms width. Very important. Plus, the cost of the sides. Each side is the one that costs six rands. So the right-hand side is going to be uh, six rands multiplied by W times H. Okay, that's going to be the width multiplied by the height. Okay, plus... The other one, the left-hand side, is actually the same thing. So I have got six rands again uh, into the width times the height. And then now I'm looking at the front and the other side. Those are going to be uh, six rands times the length times the height plus another one is going to be six rands times the length times the height. I'm just adding all of them, okay, all of those areas. Okay, cool. So if you check the first one, it's just going to be 15 rands, okay, times... Uh, LW plus LW, which is going to be two times length times width. Very important. Two times length times width. That's what I'm getting from this part here. Plus, the six rands appears four times. So it's six rands, okay? Let me drop the R. We'll get to the R later. So I'll just use the number six. Let's use the number six. We'll write the rands later. So it's going to be six times. Um, the width times the height plus the width times the height is two of them. So it's two width times height plus... The length and the height also appears twice. Two times length multiplied by the height. Okay. So this is actually going to be 30 multiplied by the length and the width. Plus, if I multiply 6 and 2, I'm going to get 12 width times height. Plus, if I multiply 6 and 2 again, I'm going to get 12 uh, length times height. Very important. But what do we know about the length? We know that the length is three times the width. It was given to us in a statement. So I'm going to have my 30. I'm representing my L with what? With 3W. That's what they told us about the relationship between the length and the width. Plus 12 times the width and the height. No problems there. And then plus 12 times. Again, there's my length. What am I writing the length with? I'm going to represent the length as three times the width. Okay, multiplied by the height. So I'm still going to have the height there. Cool. So uh, the answer here on the first one becomes 90W squared plus I've got 12WH plus. This is going to be 36WH. Eventually, we get the cost function as 90W squared added with uh, 48WH, which is exactly what the examiner was asking us to prove. That's what they wanted us to show. The question specifies that show that it's going to be 90W squared plus 48WH. So all you had to do is find the individual areas and then multiply it by the costs. Uh, and then you'll end up with the answer that you're looking at. Uh, the last question says to us, we need to now find the width of the box such that the cost to build the box is a minimum. Now for minimum cost, it means that the derivative of the cost with respect to this function, to the variable, the unknown variable, which is the width, should be uh, equated to zero. So for 9.2, we need the derivative with respect to W of the cost, right? The rate of change of the cost to be equal to zero. That's how you work out uh, W for maximum or for minimum cost. In this case, we want to minimize the cost. So we're going to get the function, cost function. Let's call it C. So C is 90 W squared plus 48 W H. Now we need to express the cost as a function of the width only. We were told that the volume is five, okay? But what is volume? Volume is length times width times height. That's five. That means the height is basically five divided by the, the, the length and the width. And the length is three times the width. So you're looking at three W times another W, which becomes five over three W squared. So that's my height in terms of the width. Then I can replace that wherever I see H. I get 90 W squared plus 48W times 5 over 3 times W squared. If you simplify this, you get 90W squared plus, you just have to work out the product of 48 times 5. The answer you're going to get from that, you need to divide it by 3. I promise you, you're going to end up with the number 80 over W squared. Now, we have to derive this. We have to just convert it to exponential form, nice exponential form. You get 80W to the negative 2. This is a function that is ready to be derived. So the derivative of this with respect to the width will just be 180 W minus 160 because 80 times 2 is 160 W to the power negative 3. That's the derivative I'm getting. 
After this, once you've got the derivative, you then have to equate it to zero. So 180 W minus 160 W to the minus three must be equated to zero. And then it's just a matter of solving for W. Convert that to a positive exponent. According to our laws of exponents, we can write this as 160 over W cubed equals to naught. And then I don't like the denominator. That W cubed, I don't like it. So I'm gonna multiply every term by W cubed, okay? We end up with 180 W to the power of four minus 160. And then if you multiply zero with W cubed, you end up with a zero, okay? Then this becomes uh, 180 W to the power of four is 160. And then W to the power of four is gonna be 160 divided by uh, 180, which is a nice number, which you guys will tell me about. I think if you take 180 and 160, it's like 16 divided by um, 18, you're gonna get a nice number, which in this case is going to just simply be eight over nine because 16, uh, eight, two goes eight times into 16 and it goes nine times into 18, so it becomes eight over nine. That is W to the power four. But we're not looking for W to the power four, we're just looking for the width. That's what the question is asking. This is the point where you then take the fourth root. You're gonna take the fourth root of W on both sides of the equation, but it's an even exponent. So it's going to be plus or minus. Please make sure that you always put plus or minus every time you are dealing with even exponents. I will then end up with an answer that says W is the fourth root of that. Let's call the calculator to assist us with figuring out what the fourth root of that particular number is simply uh, going to be. So where do you get the fourth root? You just press in your calculator. You go shift and then you press this. It will allow us here to put the number uh, four. We're looking for the fourth root. Let's go backspace, backspace have only four because we're looking for the fourth root of the number eight. That number has to be divided uh, by nine. The answer that I'm getting here is 0 0.97, okay? I'm getting a number 0 0.97. Always make sure, you don't make mistakes when you type in this. If it's an even exponent, you always have to make sure that you put the plus or minus because if you don't do that, you will then get half the answers that you should be getting. So my final answer comes out as 0 0.97. Uh, meters because he said this is actually in terms of meters. So this is actually how you would work out the value of W without any challenges. It's plus or minus, but because it's the width, right? We ignore the negatives answer because the width of a box cannot be a negative. It always has to be a positive answer.